So this class will do a little beginner's class and the idea is that you can do this class in your home without any of these specific yoga props but if you have something that's of a similar shape you can use that. So I'm sitting on a blanket. The blanket just helps lift your hips up a little bit. It can be a more comfortable seat, but you can very easily use um, a pillow from your bed or a couch pillow if you do wanna sit on something. This is a yoga block and you can use anything that's similar to this. If you have like a really thick book, that could work, um, but it's not necessary. The blocks just help lift the ground up to you, particularly with your arms if it ever feels a little bit far away. So we're gonna get started. So come into what feels like a seat that you can let your eyes close and start to breathe in. Again, if you want to sit up on something, kind of sitting so that you're on the edge of it so that the pelvis starts to tilt forward just a little bit. The hands can just come to wherever feels comfortable. Take a moment to roll out your shoulders, let your head move. We'll do a few of these like sighing, releasing exhale breaths. So just take that a couple rounds on your own. And then let the eyes close on the next exhale or find a steady gaze at the ground in front of you. And we'll start with just a very gentle pranayama. That's the breath practice in yoga. We'll start by inhaling into the chest and exhaling through the belly. And if you'd like to take your hands into those two places, you can, or you can leave them right where they are. But let's take these breaths together. So empty out your air, exhale out. And then let's inhale into the chest, into the collarbones, and exhale through the belly. Inhale into the chest. and exhale through the belly. Inhale. And exhale. And one more time, breath inhale. And exhale. You can keep your hands where they are you can draw your hands into heart center, stacking palms or making prayer hands if you'd like. Whatever time of day you're doing your practice in can be a really beautiful thing to start with. This idea of just drawing a conscious thought to your mind. So a reflection from the day or a moment of gratitude in your mind. And then we'll start by just taking a big open mouth breath with this idea of sending out whatever that is. So exhaling out all of your air. Let's take a breath in. And a breath exhale out. And if the eyes have closed, gently flutter the eyes open. You can take your hands into your lap. And for our class, we'll move through all of the motions in the spine. So we'll just start with a really gentle twist. In a beginner's practice, you can always elevate the arms overhead. But that can feel like a lot on the shoulder. So option to reach the arms up and take a twist over to the right, or to simply just take the twist over to the right, letting the left hand come over towards the right side of the body, and then reaching the right arm somewhere behind you. Think about breathing into the right shoulder, inhaling to lift up and exhaling. If you think about having almost like an owl neck, let the head start to rotate. Let's take a breath together, a breath inhale, and a breath exhale. We'll inhale, come back through center, walking the arms through center or reaching the arms up. And then we'll switch over to the left, taking the right hand over to the left leg. This time breathing into the left shoulder, lift up. And exhale to twist. 
We'll take that same owl neck. If the chin is dropping down, think about lifting the chin up. And then beginning to just rotate the neck, gazing behind you. And breathe. And let's take a breath together, a breath in. And exhale. And then we'll inhale, begin to come back through center. We're going to interlace your hands and place the hands right at the center of the chest. We'll flip the palms, reach the palms out and up, kind of scooping the arms up nice and long. You can take a little bit of a back bend. And then starting to just move over towards the right. Not thinking too much about the spine just yet, just nice side bends, inhaling up. And then taking it to the left. Let's inhale up, and then exhale Let the hands float down. We'll begin to lift up off of whatever you're sitting on. So just kind of unprop yourself. You can move it off to the side. You might want it later on in practice. And we'll come around onto our hands and our knees. This is called tabletop pose. In our tabletop, we want the hands underneath the shoulders, and the knees are under the hips. I like to start by tucking the toes. See if you can curl even the baby toe under. And then just let the hips sink back towards the heels, getting a stretch through the soles of the feet. You can let the head be heavy here if you'd like, or let the back of the neck be a little active. Let's take a breath in. And exhale. We'll inhale back into our tabletop. And then exhale, just walk the hands forward one step and let the collarbones draw forward. Come into a tabletop plank. This is a good place to start to build up some strength in a yoga practice and start to understand what's called proprioception, where your body is in space. If it feels like the shoulders are really sinking and the hips are heavy, think about if you could lift the bum up a little bit more, but not back over the knees. Let it be at the space between the shoulders and the knees. We want the collarbones to draw forward, the shoulders to draw back. If the head is heavy, allow the gaze to look forward. If you'd like to challenge yourself, you might lift one knee up at a time and then drop it back down. You can hold the place where both knees are grounded. Again, just building up some strength, holding a pose while breathing. From here, let the hips draw back over the knees. And then we'll just walk the knees back depending on how long your body is so that the arms can be forward and the knees are grounded. And the torso is at a 45 degree angle. So we're not coming into this sort of back bend collapsing place. You wanna keep the arms nice and long. See if you can take that breath, inhaling into the collarbones again and exhaling through the belly. Breath in. And exhale. From here, using the strength in your arms, walk your hands back towards the knees. And we'll come into a place where we can sit up on our shins. So we're lifting the hips up. We'll take the hands to the low back. Keep the toes tucked. And let's inhale, reach the arms up. Again, flip the palms, extend. And that same side bend, exhaling over to the right. Inhale up. And exhale to the left. Inhale up. And exhale, float the hands down. As you float the hands down, sit back onto your heels. We're going to rock backwards and come into a forward fold at the back of the mat. In your forward fold, the torso rests towards the thighs. It doesn't need to touch. The legs can be underneath your hips or they can be wider. Your choice. Arms can be heavy on the ground, reaching for opposite elbows, or hugging around and reaching for opposite shoulders. This is called rag doll. Let's take a breath in. And exhale. Now breath in 
and then exhale, release your hands down towards the ground. We'll come up into a standing pose. If the legs are very straight, just bend the knees a little bit. And then from here, think about lifting using the spinal muscles and then coming to standing, kind of taking it in stages. We'll let the palms come forward. Again, just a little bend to the knees. If the legs are super, super straight, just soften the joints. And a sun salutation. Inhale, arms are going to reach up. And exhale, forward fold down. Inhale, a halfway lift. Hands come onto the shins, extending through the torso. And exhale to forward fold. In a little bit of a different transition, inhale, crawl the arms forward and come into your plank position or your tabletop plank where the knees are grounded down. Find your plank, take a breath in, and then exhale, take your chaturanga just to the point where the arms turn on and then allow yourself to come all the way to the floor. We'll inhale, come into our back bends and for today we'll take what's called locust pose. We'll reach the arms behind us, start with the palms grounded, and then as you inhale, we'll spin the palms away from each other. So let's come onto the floor. Inhale, reach the arms up, lift the legs as well. Take a breath in. And then exhale to lower down, hands under the shoulders. Tuck the toes, take a breath in. And then exhale, press into tabletop. And take a breath in and then exhale your down dog or that down puppy pose crawling the arms forward where the knees stay grounded or if you'd like pressing into your down dog and lifting the knees up wherever you are a breath in and exhale we'll do that one more time take a breath in and then we'll exhale, begin to crawl the hands back towards the feet. You can do this in that down puppy or in your down dog. And we'll move into our forward fold at the back of the mat. You might take a whole extra breath to get there. No rush. Take an inhale, halfway lift when you do. And then exhale to fold. Inhale, reach the arms up. Remember to bend the knees just a little bit. Extend through the fingertips at the top. And exhale, hands to the chest. Let's take a breath in. And exhale. Inhale, reach the arms up. And exhale, forward fold down. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, start to crawl forward. And again, you might take a whole extra breath to get there, that's okay. Find your plank position, either with the knees lifted or the knees grounded. It's nice and strong though, where the arms are squeezing to the midline. If the head's heavy, we begin to lift it up. Take a breath in. And then exhale, bend the elbows, your chaturanga. And then we come to the ground. We'll inhale for our locust, arms reach behind us. Inhale, we lift up. And exhale down. Inhale, tuck the toes. And then exhale, press back through table. And again, moving into your puppy pose or your down dog. Wherever you are, let's take a breath in. And exhale. One more breath in. And exhale. And then we'll drop down onto our knees if we're not already there. And we'll move into our child's pose. In child's pose, the knees can be together underneath you or they can be wider. And if that extension with the arms feels like a lot, just draw the arms closer you can turn the palms up and let the forehead rest towards the hands. Wherever you are, try to breathe into the bit between the shoulder blades. Let's take a breath in. And exhale. 
We'll begin to lift up out of the pose. So based on where your arms are, it'll be a little bit different, but we'll extend the arms forward. We're gonna tuck the toes and then come to the back of the mat again. So crawl the hands backwards. We'll move into our forward fold once again. And then coming all the way up. And then through standing. Find this place where you're not quite at the back edge of your mat if you were there, but you know, a couple inches in. And we'll take our hands towards our hips. And we'll move into a standing balancing pose, so a warrior posture. We're gonna bend both of your knees to start, and we'll start by stepping the left leg forward. So if your feet could be on like a railroad track, you wanna step the left foot up to the left edge of the mat, and the right heel will stay lifted. It's called Crescent Warrior. We'll take a breath in, and exhale. And then see if you can start to balance on that right leg, lift the left foot up, and then slowly start to just step the left foot forward. It doesn't need to be all of the way. And then you might walk that right leg back until you find a place where you can come into a nice lunge position. Just getting used to what it feels like to be standing with a wider stance. Let's keep the hands on the hips. Take a breath in. And exhale. If you'd like, just as before, hands can stay here. They can come to the chest or they can extend overhead. Let's take a breath together in and exhale. We'll move into our warrior two. It's an inhale to expand the current posture and an exhale to transition warrior two. So the right heel comes to a 90 degree angle and the left knee is forward. Again, you might have to walk that left foot forward a lot of yoga poses based on the length of your legs is where you kind of need to just adjust the pose. Let's extend the arms up and draw them into the chest. And take a breath in. And exhale. One more breath in. And then we'll exhale, hinge the chest forward, plant the hands down, turn onto the ball down of the back foot, and then we'll step back into our plank position or again on the knees and take a breath in. Exhale to lower. Inhale into a back bend, your cobra or your locust, your choice. Exhale, lower. We'll tuck the toes, inhale. And then exhale again through our tabletop into downward puppy or into your down dog. A breath in and then exhale walking the hands back we'll come into that forward fold again and eventually meet up in our standing pose so that we can prep into that on the other side walk the feet up now ground into the left foot hands can come onto the hips a little bend in the standing knee we'll start to lift the right knee up off the ground and then just walk it forward. So it doesn't need to be a big long stance. The back heel, the left heel is lifted. We'll keep the hands on our hips just to find that balance. Again, remember that railroad track. And then if you'd like, hands can come to the chest or they can reach up. Deep breath in and exhale. And then we'll draw the hands into the chest if they've lifted. We'll ground down now through the left heel so it's parallel to the back edge of the mat and we find our warrior two. Again, you might wanna lengthen your stance Deep breath in and exhale. See if you can come back into whatever your purpose for your practice was. You might close the eyes. 
You might soften the jaw. And then we'll start to draw the hands to the chest, turn onto the ball mount of the back foot, and again, step back into your plank position, either on your knees or your full plank. Last time that we'll lower here, a breath in. Exhale all the way down. Inhale through back bend, your choice. And exhale to lower. And then press back into your tabletop. And then from here, we'll cross the legs underneath you or swing them around to one side so that you can just come into a place where you're sitting back on the ground. From here, we'll extend both of the legs forward to take a forward fold. And there's a couple different ways that you can do this pose. You can walk the knees towards you, let the torso come to the thighs and reach for the feet and kind of walk the feet forward and wiggle your bum backwards to the place that you feel the stretch underneath the thighs. You can also use a prop from earlier if you're using a blanket or a pillow, plant it under the knees. And then just let the legs rest on whatever that prop is and becomes a little bit more of a passive fold. So it's totally your choice, kind of experiment with both if you'd like. And then as you fold down, you can hold on to the legs if you take the passive option. You can plant the head in the hands if you're in that more active option as you're folding, you're kind of pressing the heels forward. The head might also become heavy. Wherever you are, let's take two breaths. A breath in and exhale. And a breath in and exhale. And then we'll inhale, begin to lift up. We'll plant both of the feet on the ground. The knees come to the ceiling. If you're far back on the mat, just scoot your bum forward a little bit. We'll hook and hold underneath the knees. Inhale, lift the chest up. And then exhale, begin to lower down onto the mat. As you lower down onto the mat, we'll hug the knees into the chest and just take them wide. You can rock them left and right if you'd like. And then we'll move into our spinal twist on the right side. You can unstack the knees, letting the right knee come more forward and the left leg hooking up and over. Or if you'd like, keep the knees together. The arms just rest down by your side. This is intended to be a pretty passive pose. And then we'll come back up through center, planting the feet on the ground. You can press into the heels to move the hips to the right if you'd like, to then move your legs into your spinal twist on the left side. And then we'll again, come back through center and we'll make our way into our final pose, which is known as Shavasana, where we accept, let the legs extend long. The hands can rest on your belly or the chest and the belly like we did before, down by the side. If you'd like to prop up the knees with that same exact prop, you can plant that right underneath your knees. And that might help support the low back a little bit. But the idea is that this pose is one that you can just let the body settle in. You can let the eyes close or find a steady gaze on the ceiling. Just feeling the pulse to your breath.
And you can rest in this posture for however long you like. But if you are ready to come out of the pose, a nice way to come out of it is to just start to deepen the breath, especially into the belly. So feeling the belly expand to the ceiling and then depress to the ground. And slowly letting the toes curl in and the thumbs brush along the tops of each finger. You can let the head roll side to side. And then gently planting the feet on the ground. Then just rolling over to one side. You can use the arms as a pillow. And then after another breath or so, pressing up into the same place where we started our practice, into a comfortable seated position. You can take the hands into your lap once again. Just as before, inhaling into the chest and exhaling through the belly. Returning into that same intention We'll close by drawing the hands into the chest and taking another full exhale breath. So let's empty out all of the air and take a big breath, inhale. Inhale a little bit more and open mouth, exhale out. Thank you for practicing. Namaste.